Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Larry Abramowitz. Thanks for being on the show, Larry. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. And Larry grew up in Costa Rica. He moved to the U.S. Uh, for a university in 1990. He studied manufacturing, engineering at Boston University, and then got an MBA from Wharton University in Pennsylvania. Uh, he worked uh, prior, he worked uh, for General Electric and manufacturing appliances and aircraft engines. Uh, he started doing real estate in 2014 uh, while running a flour importing and distribution company. He, he's now done over $30 million in real estate transactions in the USA, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Spain. Again, Larry, thanks again for your time and being on the show. And tell our listeners a little more about you and uh, you know how you got into this, this business called Real Estate Syndication. Uh, hi. Um... Well, basically, uh, you, you gave up a, a big part of my background, but to get basically into, into real estate, my first investment in real estate was in 1997, where I was a passive investor in a deal in Colombia, and I did a couple of deals with a, with a developer down there where I just invested, in, and that was kind of my, fir my first experience. Then when I moved to, to Miami, the real you know, big first deal I did in, uh, in, in real estate was buying my first house where it was uh, a 1950 house that had never been remodeled. So it was a huge uh, job, you know, it was a gut job renovation. And from there on, I just, uh, you know, always liked it, but I was uh, full-time working in my flower business. Um, about 2014, I decided to start doing a lot more, um, you know, a lot more real estate just to have additional income. And started buying um, properties in foreclosure. And I, you know, went from single family houses, apartments, I uh, did a commercial warehouse and a retail, um, retail office um, also about in foreclosure. So that was, um, you know, I really started doing a lot of deals, especially in, in 2014. And then just decided to go into syndication this year. And I just uh, closed on my first deal in September, 108 um, units, apartments in Daytona Beach. Congratulations. That's a Thank big you. accomplishment. Big Thanks. Accomplishment. Yeah, so I want to get into that deal a little bit. And, but I, wanted to, I want to back up and ask you a little bit about, you know, everybody talks about, you know, how to get into this business, you got to educate yourself. And, and so to get started. And so how, how did you educate yourself, you know, maybe from going from doing the foreclosures and, and working on that side to, to going into the syndication business? I read a lot of books. I mean, I first started reading, um, um, I started reading, there was a book actually, it was, it was a uh, pretty, pretty good. I mean, but it was a uh, Trump university, but they, it was by David Lindell and he had a, that's how I first started getting in touch with multifamily. I mean, I, I read both of those books, which are pretty good starting books for, you know, learning the basics about real estate. And then I just kept on reading every book I could get my hands on. Um, and actually in the last year, I really started listening to podcasts. I never did podcasts before or listened to them. And uh, this is the first time, you know, when, when I discovered it, I started listening to every single podcast I, I could. And I learned a lot through it. So, um, you know, just, just educating myself. I mean, and then uh, for the auctions, it was actually a friend of mine that approached me to do some deals to buy auctions. And he taught me how to use the auction website and how to investigate deals. So that's how I got involved with that. Nice. So, you know, let's go into that, that first syndication, that first deal. And, uh, you know, could you give us a little background about the deal and maybe how you found it? Yeah, I was uh, looking for deals uh, in Florida. Started probably at the beginning of, uh, of this year. And while looking for, for, I was looking at a deal in Gainesville actually and uh, started interviewing property managers. And while interviewing a property manager, um, he said that sometimes he gets deals from, uh, 
from some investors that want to sell that he knows uh, before they go, they get listed. So he's got deals all the time that he's looking at. Um, and about a month later, he called me. He said he had two deals, one in uh, Largo, in Largo, Florida, so right next to Tampa or St. Pete. And the other one, it was in Daytona Beach. So he basically told me I had maybe maximum two days to make a decision if I wanted to buy it or not. He already had it negotiated. He already had the LOI accepted. So it was basically to pick either one or both of the deals. So I got in my car, drove there. Um, I think I drove like 10 hours in one day and just uh, visited both properties and some of the comps in the area just to get a, a feel for it. And I really liked uh, the Daytona area a lot better. I mean, I think it was a nicer property with a lake in the middle and a nice location. Um, and you know it didn't need a lot of maintenance i mean it was a it was a nice clean deal so i i decided to move on with that deal i almost did both but i you know really was scared of you know if i couldn't raise the money for you know two deals at that size my first uh my first time syndicating so i just uh picked one of them so going into that first deal you know what were some some of the biggest hurdles that, that you had to cross, you know, never doing a syndication for, what were a few things that, that were really stick out to you that were hard to overcome? I mean, the biggest one was raising the money. I mean, I, my idea was to always put 10% of the deal. Um, the property manager also was investing in the deal. Uh, so, you know, between both of us, um, we had, maybe 15% of the money, the rest um, I had to raise and I had never, you know, raised money before except for one of my auction deals. So it was, um, it was a challenge. I mean, that was my biggest concern is if I could raise the funds to, to make the deal. But on, on the other hand, I just said, I have to go for it and make it happen. You know, so I, um, that, that was really my biggest concern over everything. So I want to come back to the raising money, but I wanted to ask you also about the relationship with the property manager. I think that's, that's interesting. You know, a lot of people, you know, a big thing right now, obviously is finding deals, right? People can't find deals and where, you know, you were interviewing a property management company uh, pursuing a different deal. Uh, but then, you know, the relationship really took a turn and, and he, he brought deals to you. I think that's very interesting. And, um, you know, so what did that, you know, did he ended up, I know you said he invested in the deal, but is he a partner, you know, in the deal itself? No, originally he proposed or that's what he wanted to do. So I went and met with him because I hadn't met him before. And we started talking about it. And since we never met before, I, I didn't feel comfortable having a, a, a partner that I didn't know my, on my first deal. So I, I asked him if he'll consider not becoming a partner and he was okay with it. So I just uh, negotiated a, a, like a, like a finder's fee type of thing for that, that he suggested the amount. And I, I thought it was reasonable to, you know, to get me into this deal off market. Nice. Nice. Uh, so that shows a lot about, you never know who you're going to meet, where the conversations are going to go and, and what kind of value you can provide one another. Um, but back to the, the big hurdle of raising, raising the capital for this deal. So, you know, that, you know, you, you were going into it, you knew that was going to be difficult. You weren't sure what to expect to walk us through a little bit about, uh, how you raised the capital, what you had to do. Um, well, the first thing was putting the package together, which was, uh, that was also challenging. If you never done a, one of these syndication packages, I mean, I, I had to, I found some people to help me and actually through Upwork. You know, I, I hired a, a person to, you know, redo the numbers so they're more presentable from what I had in my spreadsheet. And I also hired uh, somebody that, had, that would always did this presentation. So once I had the package together, then I had to get on and start calling. Um, um, basically, I reached out to every single person that, I've, that I have on Facebook that I know could probably invest. Um, LinkedIn, I reached back to my classmates from, from the university, from actually even from high school in Costa Rica. I mean, I, I reached to every person that I know that either owns a business or, or I, I thought could possibly invest in the deal. And I mean, I, I pulled it off. It was scary to the end because I was still missing, um, missing some money at the end. And I 
actually had one last investor that called me uh, and he asked me how much money I needed. And I thought it was 300 and it was really 500. I, I guess I missed uh, a number on the spreadsheet or, and so he said, okay, put me for the 300. And when I got back home, because he caught me in the street, I, I was looking back at the numbers and I said, oh, I'm missing 200. And we're, we're like about two weeks out, out into closing. So uh, I had to go and raise the, the other uh, 200. Uh, but, you know, I pulled it off. And I think once people start seeing other people investing and that you're filling out the deal, I mean, I guess they get more comfortable. I mean, they ask who invested and if they know him, they, they I mean, had a group of people that they all invest together, each individually. But they, if one guy likes a the deal, they all go in with, with, with the deal. So you start finding out that there's there's a lot of people out there that, that invest in these deals. You just have to work hard at it. And, and call them and present. So that, that's a that's a big part of the uh, or the, the very time consuming that you just have to be ready for. So you know, tell us a little bit about those conversations when you're first reaching out to those people. You know, for the first time because that that's a big fear. You know, a lot of people getting into this business have is like, well, you know, what do we even talk about? I've never done a syndication before. And you know, could you could you give some pointers on maybe how you handled that conversation, that first interaction about this deal to somebody that doesn't know you, as far as on the on the real estate side, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the positive thing is that all these people knew me, and. You know, they knew I was a hard worker, you know, honest, um, you know, and never heard anything negative about me. So that, that, that definitely helps. And then I talked to them about the other deals that I've done because their biggest concern was about running a multifamily, but, you know, without ever running a, a big multifamily property. But the reality is that, you know, in the last uh, four years, I've been doing a lot of uh, single family and apartment single uh, individually. And just by, by, I went from gutting out, houses and apartments, full remodel, I self-manage all the properties. So just by doing all of that, I mean, I gained a lot of experience. So basically that was my selling point is that the returns that I got before on my deals and, um, you know, all the experience that managing my properties, um, actually having a property manager, you get rid of a lot of the day-to-day, which makes it a lot easier to, to, to run. I think we're, we're getting disconnected for some, are we good? Yeah, we're good. So, uh, no, that's great. Uh, you know, the, cause a lot of people talk about, you know, what do I even talk about and how, you know, how do I bring that stuff up? But so you, you, know, you were able to use your, your, you know, your previous experience and really elaborate on that and build kind of, you know, show them your track record in other, other aspects, even of real estate, which was good, even though it wasn't syndication and, and, you know, that, and it's great that you already had those relationships. Uh, you know, these people obviously already knew you and trusted you and seen you as a hard worker. Um, so, you know, this, this uh, package that you present to them, you know, could you tell us what that is and, and uh, maybe some, give us some pointers on what needs to be in that? Well, basically it's executive summary, uh, which, you know, you want to give all your, your main points about, I mean, basically what are you going to get if you return this deal? I mean, what, I mean, before I send it to some investors, uh, one friend investor that I send it to, um, he, he mentioned one thing that I think is very important to do in these presentations. You want to talk about the deal and the numbers first. A lot of people talk about the location and, you know, you have 30 pages of, of information about an area and, and comps and all this stuff. And most of these investors are so busy, they don't have time to look at all this package. So... I put in the first page, it was the executive summary. Then I put in uh, like, a, like a table format with the details of the deal, the fees, the structure. And the third page was my financials. I mean, and, and after all of that, I talked about, you know, the, the, the Daytona area, the market, the comps. But I really started with getting to the point first. Um, and I think that that's, I mean, and that's very important because the investor's time is very valuable. So if they don't even want to, if they don't like the first page, I don't think they're going to read the rest or talk to you. So um, that was very important. And then when I send the email to everybody, I also summarize in bullets what was the the key points of the deal and the returns. Because at the end of the day is what am I going to get if I put money into this deal? And that's what people want to know. Then they'll read the rest if they're interested. So, so. So what was it about this deal that, that said, you know, that really told you, okay, I want to pursue this one, maybe as opposed to the other deal that you were, that you were offered? 
I mean, the numbers were very similar for both. So that's why I said that I, I thought about doing both. Um, Largo area, for some reason, I didn't like so much where the, the location of the property, it wasn't, on the, it was not on the main uh, road. It was, uh, you, you know, you couldn't see it from the main road. It, I didn't like so much the area. It was next to a gas station. And so it was not crazy about it. Um, and the second deal, I mean, the Daytona deal, I really, again, I liked it. It was on the main street, like one of the main uh, roads there in Daytona. So you get a lot of visibility. It's a beautiful property. I mean, when you drive in, you drive into a, a beautiful lake, you know, with all the buildings around it. So it was just a very attractive uh, uh, deal. There was a lot of value add um, potential. I mean, they had done minor remodels with with pretty interesting rate increases, and and they did a full remodel where they were getting about one hundred and fifty dollar increases on on about a five to six thousand dollar remodel, depending on the condition of the unit so i i mean i definitely like the deal there was a lot of potential to remodel the clubhouse the tennis court that was never being used it was like an abandoned court uh, the pool was also could use some some help so we're going right now through all these renovations nice so you know could you tell us uh, and i want to get into like the business plan and some of that but could you tell us how you structured this deal say with investors what type of split and you know how did you handle that I wanted to keep it simple, even though a lot of people uh, or investors prefer the waterfall. But basically, I I structured uh, where I put in ten percent of the of the equity. Um, it was a four and a half million dollar raise. Um, the rest was debt. It was a Fannie Mae loan uh, where I did a fifteen year fixed uh, thirty year amortization, and we were able to get eight years of interest only, which was uh, which was pretty good. Um, and the 4.5 million, um, basically the way the returns, it's a 7% preferred. And, you know, everybody wanted to have the eight and say a lot of, a lot of deals uh, do an eight. And I, and I was speaking to my investors. I said, you got to be realistic. I mean, if a deal can do eight, I'll give the eight. I don't want to be in debt for three years and, and owe you money for two or three years until my, you know, we can pay the eight. So realistically, we can do a seven. Um, and hopefully we'll do better because I'm, I like to be very conservative on my numbers and, um, and we'll probably do better than that. But uh, that's what I was offering. And then after I returned the seven pref and all the money, all the capital invested back to the investors, uh, the additional profit after a sale will be split 70% to the investor, 30% to the general partner. Are you tired of answering emails from investors about when they'll receive their K-1s? Let the real estate CPA handle the accounting and taxes on your next syndication, and they'll file your tax returns by March 15th so you can get your K-1s to your investors by the individual filing deadline on April 15th. Not only will this reduce headaches, but it will help you retain investors over the long term by improving investor experience. The Real Estate CPA is now offering a special virtual workshop to the listeners of the Real Estate Syndication Show on how to answer tax-related questions from your investors. Learn more today by visiting therealestatecpa.com forward slash syndication. Nice. So you already have returned investor capital. Right. First, uh, you can return the seven, then the investor capital, and then it was a 70-30 split. Nice. Nice. So, you know, going forward, what is the, the business plan or the, you know, going, or how, what are you going to do to this property and how long are you going to keep it and, and what are you doing? And we originally, your plan, a uh, whole period, uh, what we're doing is we're going to remodel. There's about 80 units that are pretty old looking. I mean, still like 1980s uh, product. It's a 1985 property. So the, the, the original, so it's perfect to remodel. So we're doing the, Plank flooring, we're changing the face of the cabinets, painting the cabinets, uh, uh, resurfacing the countertops, black appliances, and changing all the light and plumbing fixtures, uh, the doorknobs. Uh, so we're spending about 5000 on the one bedrooms and 2000 uh, sorry, 6000 on the two bedrooms. And with this package, we're getting... 150 to 200 dollar increases on the, on the unit so it's a very nice return 
it's about a 40% uh, return investment on, on remodeling. So um, you know, we're very excited. We plan to do two units a month and we already did in the first two months, we already remodeled eight units. I think nice. by the end of the year, we're going to be about 10 or 12 units uh, remodeled by the time we're done with December. So we're going very fast. So the plan is that anything that turns that hasn't been upgraded, we're going to upgrade because we were able to get the rents. And that will definitely increase our returns moving forward from what the original plan was. And maybe it cut out just a little bit, but what was the hold period on this property? It's a five-year hold period. Um, so our, our expected returns are about 8.5% cash on cash and a 16% IRR. Nice. Nice. So, you know, as far as the syndication business, you know, why, uh, why not grow a single family portfolio or, you know, that you are already doing or, you know, keeping on doing the foreclosures? Why, why syndication? Well, one is because foreclosures dried up. I mean, the inventory or, you know, was bidding on a lot of uh, these foreclosures and they were getting canceled before even you know, getting auction. I mean, so there were people are negotiating with directly with the bank, the, the owners and, the market is so hot here in Miami that um, you know, very few, very little product is actually making it to foreclosures. So when that was drying up, I started looking at other investments. I did study industrial for about a year because I already had bought a warehouse in foreclosure. And I mean, I like also industrial because it's easier to manage. I mean, once you lease it, um, you pretty much never hear about the tenant unless you have a major issue. So it's a, it's a very easy asset to manage. But when you have a, you know, when, when I bought it, it was vacant for six months until we leased it. So the risk there is that if you have a single tenant property, um, you, on this one, it was all cash, but if you had a loan, you, you're going to be struggling to pay to make those loan payments. So, um, I just, uh, I did I wasn't a, a good ask to grow in. I mean, in, in, in scale, I wanted to scale up. Um, so decided to, to start syndicating and uh, to do bigger deals and to do bigger deals. I had to raise money because I just couldn't buy a hundred units multifamily on my own. And I'm part of a, of a real estate uh, meetup group. Um, and we're nine people in this group. It's part of the entrepreneur organization that I'm a member. And and in this group, there's a lot of experienced investors. I mean, with over a thousand units and people that have been doing this for longer than I have. And when I asked them what would they do different, they all said, don't go under a hundred units. And that's the reason I, I started over a hundred units is because of uh, you need the scale to have a, a property manager, maintenance staff, and really, you know, not having to deal with the day to day of the property. So other than raising capital, uh, what, what's been the hardest part? It sounds like you're pretty successful at this, at raising capital also, but what's been the hardest part of the syndication process or journey for you so far? Oh, the, the whole thing. I mean, I did it all on my own. I mean, except that, um, you know, the presentations, I mean, I, I hired people, but I mean, I still was, I was doing the presentation. I was doing the raising money. I was doing the due diligence, uh, dealing with the, the purchase agreement. So it was just, you know, juggling all these things at the same time. I mean, I really, um, I mean, I really didn't have a, a lot of, uh, any, any free time. I mean, I was probably working about 20 hours a day, Saturday, Sunday, just to get everything done because it was, I mean, I, I was overwhelmed with the amount of work. Um, it was also, you know, the first deal. So it's, um, you know, loan documents, PSA. I mean, I'm used to doing, uh, purchase agreements that are, you know, five pages long, you know, from the realtor association. And this is a complete different, uh, I mean, here you have our contract, I think was 80 pages long. So it's, uh, you know, just reading it and, and, and editing every time, every time it went, it went around. I mean, it took almost three weeks to get it done. So that was a, it was a long process. So what will you change on your second deal? you know, from, from this first one, you know, you, you've done all this, you, you did so much work um, and, you know, you've successfully completed this syndication. What will you do differently on the next one? Well, I'm, right now I'm working on setting up a team to help me out. So I'm, I'm looking for somebody to help me on the right deals and do a lot of that, 
number crunching and market research that I, it takes a lot of my time. Um, I'm also interviewing people for the presentations so I can have somebody already ready to go on that. And, you know, that will be a big part of, uh, of my job. And then on the money raising, I'm, I've been talking to, a, you know, building a database of people I've talked to that are interested in doing deals. Um, so just trying to be more organized in that way where I don't have to do everything by myself, you know. And, um, so, I mean, you just have to have a team. I mean, it's very hard to do it on your own. I mean, one deal was fine, but I think as I grow, uh, it's going to be harder to do it without building up a team. So uh, it sounds like maybe the answer to my next question is building a team, but, uh, but I wanted to ask you, you know, what is, what's some way you're improving your business right now that we can all apply uh, to our businesses? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. So some way you're, you are improving your business right now that we can all apply to our business. Well, one thing that I, that I apply and I, it's a book that I read called Traction. Mm. Um, it's called Traction, Get a Grip on Your Business by uh, Gino Wickman. And that has been a life changer for me. I mean, it just changed the way I run my business uh, in my flowers. And I'm, I'm starting to implement the same in, in my real estate. But it's just basically of, of having, you know, setting up your business where you have a 10-year goal, three-year goal, um, one-year goal, and then you break it down into quarters. And you just have to have a, you know, once you start building a team, you have to be very clear what everybody in your team is responsible for. And everybody has specific goals that they have to accomplish. And I mean, that just helps you get organized um, very well. Then, you know, it's having daily meetings with, with your team, but it's only 10, 10 minute meetings. And then uh, weekly meetings where you, you go a little deeper into the issues in the company. Right now, because I'm still a one-man show in the syndication, I mean, I, I, I can't do a lot of that, but I'm trying to build a quarterly planning into managing the property right now in Daytona. What, what would you say, Larry, has been the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I like to say hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Just hustling. I mean, I, I work hard. I don't stop. I don't give up. You know, I... Uh, I mean, like I lost a deal last week and I was looking at 112 units and I, yeah, it's, it's disappointing when you don't win it, but you just have to keep on going and plugging in, you know, till you do your next one. Uh, I think the first deal is always the hardest. That's what everybody says. And I agree. I mean, and once you get through that, I think uh, you start feeling more comfortable uh, putting offers and, you know, talking to brokers and talking to owners and just, um, you get a lot more confident while you're doing that. So that also helps to you know, build quicker your business. Well, Larry, uh, you've been a great guest. And, you know, when I met you in Denver and you were telling me about this first deal, I knew you'd be a great guest because a lot of people are in, you know, those same shoes or they haven't done that first deal yet and they could relate to your story. Uh, but, you know, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about your business. Uh, yeah, they can reach me by email. Uh, at broadviewcap.com that's b-r-o-a-d v-i-e-w-c-a-p.com and say that again it cut out just a little bit i want to make sure the listeners can hear that sorry yeah they can reach me at larry l-a-r-r-y at broadviewcap.com which is uh, b-r-o-a-d-v-i-e-w-c-a-p.com Great. Thank you again, Larry, for your time and being a great guest. I hope the listeners will connect with Larry and I hope you'll go to our Facebook group where you can uh, connect with, with me and Larry and learn from experts uh, like Larry and, and we can grow our businesses together. I hope you'll go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can schedule a call with me and, and I'll help you uh, any way I can. And I uh, look forward to connecting and getting to know you and uh, we will talk to the listeners tomorrow. Great. Thanks for having me. With me. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.